name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Nice. <laughs> Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Straight up mom life. We are here, full effect. Welcome, welcome. We are so excited. My name is Angelica Stanley, and this is my sister in Christ, Shanish Jones. I am super honored to be here with you today um, for this breakthrough. What is it, sis? What are we calling this? Breakthrough announcement. Yes, yes. Yes, I'm super. I would super dance, but I don't know how, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't my ministry. That is my ministry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. God is good. God is great. Yes. Okay. So, kicking this off, we're excited about this mostly. And I'm getting the notifications now that you all are getting notified about this. So, um, we'll just kind of do probably up, I guess this, maybe the three minute mark. We'll kind of just do some introductions of what this is. Um, Shanice, will you go ahead and do, um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, and something that brings you joy. How about that? <laughs> okay. You guys, I needed this. Okay. So my name is Shanice and I am a mom of eight beautiful children. I have six boys and two girls. And I help moms to reinvent themselves by healing from their past trauma. Just a little backstory for you guys on why I started this past to help other moms heal. I was broken. <laughs> I was broken to the core, you guys, in 2017. And I'll, I'll go deeper in that once we like really, really start. But I want to share some backstory so you can understand why I'm so passionate to help other moms heal. Um, I knew it was a better version of me deep down inside. I just did not know how to tap into that. Um, I didn't know that I needed to. I needed God. I needed to, to surrender my all to him in order to walk in my fullness. I was trying to do it by myself. I was trying to be healed by myself. And I didn't even know I needed healing. I didn't even know I needed purpose. I just knew I needed more than what I was having at that moment. And in 2017, I remember sitting in my bathroom. I would just had got evicted from my apartment. I had just left my relationship that I had been in for 13 years and he was abusive. And I remember sitting on the bathroom floor, just crying out to God, like, God, what am I here for? What is my purpose? And it was like, God was like, I'm glad you ask. Now I have you exactly where you need to be. Sometimes God will allow us to be so broken because that's when we can crawl to him and say, God, you know what? I need you. It's not because he wants us to be broken because his goal is for us to be whole. However, life happened to us. We're out of the will of him and we become broken. But guess what? Broken crayons still color. And as I was crying out to him, that's when he started showing me my gifts. He started showing me my talents. But it started by me submitting to the healing. And as I start healing, he start pulling those things out of me. He start pulling that unforgiveness, which I'm going to talk about. He start pulling those, that bitterness, that bitter root. He start pulling those, that resentment, that jealousy, that envy that was rotting my bones. He start pulling that stuff out of me so I can start walking in my power and my dominion. Because, because I was so broken and I was in agreement with the kingdom of darkness, my, um, my power was disarmed. Because I was in agreement with unforgiveness. I'm going to end right there and let my girl, because I was, yeah, I was going to go. I, I know. I, we're, we're ready to go. We're ready. To we're ready. God. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to let you go. <laughs> no, thank you. No, that was, that was beautiful. The whole time I was like, let me pull myself out of this. Let Lord, let just speak. Lord, Jesus, let her share her story. <laughs> yes. It was so powerful. But I can, I, that's one of the reasons why I'm so honored and blessed to just be on this adventure with you, my sister, because there's so much that we have learned in the past season, almost a year now of us being sisters, right. And knowing each other and growing, but um, I, I can relate to, you know, critical parts in your story about, you know, the bitterness, the brokenness, the roots and diving deep and seeing what those are. And if you're just tuning in, we're doing the breakthrough announcement and we're going to end this um, with two step action points to kick off your breakthrough. OK. Yes. And so our special announcement before we go into that, a little bit about myself. My name is Angelica Stanley and this, 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 this really that's what it is. <laughs> but in all honesty, I 
I work as a daily life overcome strategist and a biz connect coach, but really I'm a wife, I'm a mom and I'm a business owner and I had no clue how to do none of it. Okay. Like, <laughs> like none of it. Um, my calling was for, for my breakthrough and my healing and adventuring out was to ditch my career. Now, mind you, career was my idol. I loved climbing corporate ladder. I loved going to school and getting the accolades and having all these things around and, oh, I did this and I have this success and I got an A and I can, I'm the best student and all of these things. But when it came down to anxiety, depression, thoughts of suicide, bitterness, brokenness, healing, not one of those were there for me, but the blood of Jesus. Yes the healing, the speaking life. So when I speak from, you know, get your fruit back, it was literally me dying to flesh. And it's a constant thing. It's a constant thing. I had to let go of selfish ambition. I had to let go of idols. I had to let go of sexual immorality, lust, fits of rage, all of these things. And it's constant, right? New levels, new devils, right? So the times that you're seeking God and you're like, why does this come here? Why does this happen? For one, and I know our sister will get into this, it's showing you something, but then it's also, God is so loving and kind that he's going to take you through things because there's a lesson, right? Mm -hmm. There's power in your story. And so the lessons and the action steps that you take you get clear clearing. Like I was getting healing. I was being delivered from things and I got a business plan. I didn't, I didn't go to business school, but I help women launch their business on the building fund. You hear and what I'm saying? She do amazing y'all. I'm telling you get up in there. <laughs> yes. So getting your fruit back was actually snatching my love back, my joy, my peace, my patience, my gentleness, my kindness, my goodness, my faithfulness, and my self-control in Christ Jesus unlocked the mm -hmm. business plan, unlocked the connections for business, for kingdom ambassadorship, to help reach one, teach one, help women write their stories and yes. self-publish and build a business on a solid foundation in Christ, right? Yes. So we're excited I'm going to transition over here. Let's talk about our breakthrough announcement, sis. What are you most excited about this breakthrough announcement? Mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Mindset, you guys. I am trying to hold back tears. Not because I'm um, I'm excited. I'm excited because especially when Sis start talking about the healing and how it unlocked her purpose. So if you guys saw me looking down, I was trying to grab a pen so I could write because it was thoughts coming to my mind as she was speaking. Um, when I surrendered to God in 2017, y'all, I didn't know my purpose. I didn't know who I was outside of being a mom. I was completely broken. I was, I had so much, the fist of rage. I was so in much, so much rage. Um, I put so much anxiety in my kids because I was selfish. I didn't care about anything. I didn't care. I didn't even care about my kids' well-being. And let me identify what I mean by that. I was in a, a toxic relationship that was killing me daily. Mm. And I was so consumed on having him in my kids life that I thought that I was doing my kids a favor when in actuality I was not only feeling myself with depression feeling myself with anxiety but I was I was putting these emotions inside of our kids because how many of us know that trauma is mm -hmm. passed down how many of us know anxiety and this sin that we we go through or this depression and mental illness that we come through, we go through is passed down Amen. From other from the the forefathers before us because of their disobedience, so now we have to break down these demonic altars that they built from three four generations ago. Is it fair? No, but God have equipped us to tear that thing down by obeying Him, and He will give us the power to kill every giant, every serpent that try to come against us. Right. So when like I said, it unlocked her. It unlocked uh, the business plan. It unlocked the vision. It's unlocked the purpose so many people is walking around trying to find their purpose and that's cute because our purpose is in god it's real cute but what you fellow to understand is what's that in that purpose it's 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 healing that's your number one i i see god for purpose 
I, I, I was seeking him for purpose. And he's like, oh, you want purpose? Okay, I need you to revisit this pain right here. I need you to forgive this person right here. And I'm like, why I got to do all of this? Why I got to fight all these people? Why I got to revisit this pain? And it wasn't until I, I was able to get in his presence for him to download inside of me like, you got some hidden bitterness over there. And I'm like, okay, what? So one day y'all sit down at, at my table and God told me to write a book. And I'm like, I don't know how to write one. I had I had an excuse. I had an excuse. I don't know. I wasn't holding myself accountable. I, I, I had an excuse. Oh, you're going to try to run that? So then he raised up this woman named Shamika Dean. And she came on a live one day. She said, God wants you guys to write a book. Mm. How she know this? So uh, I'm and like, it, it just, it just, you, you can't run from him. <laughs> like you can't. When it's your time, it's your time. <laughs> what you like, Tommy, you want to be in that well? <laughs> so I, uh, uh, I say, God, if you want me to write this book, let me know. He gave me a vision of somebody at the table with the same hairstyle I had on, sitting down writing inside of a book. I'm like, okay, that's me. He's making it real obvious, right? So I'm sitting down and I'm writing. And I'm crying. My mom is sitting in the chair. She don't know why I'm crying. I'm trying to hold back the tears. And I had discovered that I was molested at 13. Mm -hmm. And you guys are probably thinking like, how do you not know this? How he conned it. He was like a, a deceiving snake. How he conned it. Like, I have to prepare you for you to lose your virginity. Imagine you guys, he was, this was a 40 year old man. I was just 13 years old. But in my mind, he had sued it to the point that it was okay that like this was okay. So I'm sitting here writing in my in my book and I'm crying because I, I got the revelation. This was the hidden envy. This was the hidden bitterness that I had over this that had that had stole my joy, that had stole my peace, that had me in so much turmoil in my mind that I felt like I was losing my mind. I remember sitting down on the bathroom floor. I know y'all go hear me say bathroom floor a lot. I talk to God a lot in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's every mom's hiding like, I'm like Jesus. So I'm sitting down and I feel like I'm I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like my my mind is just going hey right. I got thoughts everywhere. I'm just filled with so much. And I'm like how do I get to this point? Mm -hmm. And what we fail to understand is when we go on through life and we go through trauma, we go through pain, we go through all of this these fruits, these rotten fruits, that depression, that anxiety, that anger, that sex, that those are those are fruits, but they're rotten fruits. And the enemy at that time, he have legal access over us because we're out of the will of God. Amen. But Amen. somebody take restoration. Mm. God will come. Take me back to Joel 225. Yes. I will restore every Lucas Eve, every canker worm, every pommel worm, every caterpillar. You guys, those are spirits that came and ate at you because of your disobedience, because of your forefathers' disobedience. But God said, I will come and I will restore that. You guys, I was reading Joshua last night and I, I had never noticed this until last night. I was actually, God had been telling me to rest. Y'all, so I've been toiling to enter his rest because I was, every now and then, y'all, like Sister, so it's a daily, it's a daily walk. He had to take that ride and grab my neck and get 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 over here mm -hmm. yeah do that to me sometimes and i was reading the book of joshua and he's and i never noticed this before but he told them i have a resting place for you yes lord thank you jesus just imagine you guys going through torment all them years mm. you haven't you you feel like you losing your mind. You feel like your heart is gonna burst open every time you look at a certain or somebody say a person's certain name. You feel that off in your heart because you just want to just wear back and just knock them out because what they did to you. Now I'm not gonna justify for what some people did to you. I would never say, oh, they did that to you. Throw it under the rug and forgive them. The forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. Amen. Amen you because they come in that that locust is coming and it's eating at your joy it's eating at your identity it's eating at your purpose it's eating at that vision and as you um uh, uh surrender that over to god god will start unlocking that purpose and that vision but yes. as I was reading that i was like oh man god has a place yes he the land for us to dwell in, to rest in. So that new illness, 
that anxiety will not be able to torment you anywhere. Why? Because you're resting in his bosom. Yes. Because you're in obedience and you're in for you're forgiving those that hurt you. And it's not for you. It's not, I mean, I'm sorry, it's not for them, it's for you. It's for you to rest. Amen. Amen. Be at peace. I love that, sis. And that's like the perfect, oh, praise God. That's like the perfect. God is so good. Move, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Um, if in those moments, right? I'm really excited and I want to share this. I'm going to bring it on screen because sis and I have been sitting on this for a very long time. And when we say very long time for this big announcement, we've been talking about this. It's been uh, when we first met, we knew that we were going to launch this. We knew that things were going to move forward. We knew we just didn't know the appointed time. Mm. And literally it has been the journey of us from what she shared with the stuff that I've had to overcome and face for the past year. Right. And mm -hmm. look at certain things really is what does walking into the things of God, what does walking into the things God has for you look like? Mm -hmm. And that question I put on here on the screen is because, you know, I'm creating all this stuff and when I'm creating it, um, you know, it's the fun part, right? There's the healing process. Like Shanice talked about the healing and we'll close, we're going to close up on your two action steps. But the big announcement that we have is for March 23rd for April to April 1st. And it's walking you through. If you ever feel like you're, you're going to do something, but you get a roadblock, you're going to do something and you fail at something. Right. And then it's like, you feel all of these things and it's like, God, why? Like, I know you led me to this. I know you told me to do this, right? Because we are we want our healing. We want to be obedient to God. We want to do these things, right? But one of the things, right? Let's be honest with ourselves, right, Shanice? Like, we have to be honest. She, we talk about this all the time. Like, sis, I just have to be honest with myself. Like, God already knows. But striving is getting you nowhere. But mm -hmm. depressed, anxious, overwhelmed, and angry at yourself while you're taking it out on your loved ones. Yeah. So you're striving for healing. You're wanting these things. You're wanting all these things, but your house life, your marriage, your personal life, your self-care, your kids, everything is a mess, right? Everything is a mess. And it's like, why? Like, why is this happening? Why does this happen like this? Okay. So mom guilt is a real thing, right? Shanice, like, Shanice and I were talking the other day and I was sharing with her some things that had happened with my son, you know, just mom life. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old praise God. I mean, they, I mean, they just bring so much joy into my, my life and my husband and our family. And when something happens, like it's, oh, I should have done this, or I, sh I know better. Like, oh, I let this get ahead of that. Or how come I didn't do that? And we start thinking of all of these things. And so mom guilt is a real thing. What guilt is a real thing. But we need to be able to release those things and be a forgiveness, right? And Shanice is going to talk to you a lot about that as an action step. But what if you could go on a real raw and relatable adventure that allows you to finally focus, that allows you to gain clarity for that dream business you have always wanted, right? That you see, because like you... You want this, you see this vision that he gave you, right? But it's like way up there. And it's like, but my life is a mess. Like all of these things, how could you call me for this, right? But then being able to discover your own roadmap toward healing and your own transformation so that you can finally get your joy back. If we could offer, take you on an adventure, if you could join us on this for five days, would you do it? Would you do it? It's real. It's raw. It's relatable. It's daily life things. It's healing all of that stuff. Right, Shanice? Yes. Yes. Would you do it? If you guys, I can like so stand for like a whole year. Like just have been healing. I, I remember it was I remember it was last year, like August, September, October. It was like God was putting his finger like, hey, you gotta deal with this and this. And this, but it was good things, you guys, because now I look back on it, it hurt it. It hurt it like you know what. But I can actually I can breathe now. Right. Amen. I'm to the point that I'm like, 
We will never be in a place that we have arrived. Because God said that he will work that good thing in you until the return of Christ Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. So we can always be healing at certain, uh, some mistake or growing from glory to glory, faith to faith. Mm-hmm. I'm in, in my life that God is bringing me to a place of rest um, after just eight, nine months of healing, right? But it's that that time that I'm able, I know that I have a clear path now. I'm not full of anxiety on how I'm going to take care of my kids and how I'm going to do this. He's calling me to that place of relationship so we can rest. Amen. It's rest in him. And outside, the reason why you're so full of anxiety and you're anxious and depressed because you're operating in hopelessness. For me, for many years, I operated in hopelessness because I did not know I had a resting place. I did not know that God was opening his arms to me like, come here. The enemy had distorted my mind so much that I was like, God don't want to talk to me. I'm the least, I'm the least person he wants to see right now. Amen. Amen. It's hard when you see that because you get filled with that. And then you start thinking those things. And the beauty of God is when he steps in and we go into this seat of repentance. Like when you, I was actually just listening. Was it Peter when he was like God or is it Saul when they were just, he was like, I'm, I'm this, like, I'm, I'm awful. Like I'm full of all this sin. I'm all of this. And God sent an angel to talk, to speak and tell him, yes, but let me touch you so you can be healed mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. So you can be set free. Let me show you the things that you're called to conquer. Cause you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. See, the enemy gets us and fills us with these things so that we think that we can't, we can't do these things. And you're right. We can't do them on our own. So if you're someone that's been leaning on your own understanding and you keep hitting roadblocks and all of these different things, and it's like, but Lord, like I, I thought this is what you wanted and you're not able to, breathe. Yes. We have to surrender the entire thing, our entire life, our thoughts, our focus, everything unto God so that you can just breathe. Yes. And so if you're interested, okay, this is a five day challenge for the everyday mom looking to get their joy back while healing, while healing into your there, right? I'm speaking to you, mama creative purpose, whatever yeah. that is, whatever it is, if he's called you to lead homeschooling in your home, your creative pur- purpose, right? If he's called you to write the book, if he's called you to launch the podcast, if he's called you to start the ministry, if he's called you to climb up in the corporate ladder for a certain reason, whatever it may be, but to get your joy back and yeah. heal through it so that you can Go into your creative purpose, knowing that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, that you are the head and not the tail, that you are the apple of his eye. You are his beloved. And how do we know that? I could say it. Shanice could tell you. But until you dust off that Bible and get the red letters of Jesus in the word of God, the Old Testament, black and white, the paper in your eyes and read it. And, and chew on it and, and marinate in it, you won't believe it mm-hmm. until you do it yourself. Nobody, it's like, it's like kids, right? I was just telling my son, don't touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. Don't touch the cup. It's hot. Don't touch the stove. And they get burned. Mm-hmm. We, sometimes we have to learn the hard way because that's our flesh, right? Yeah. That's our flesh. But God is so good and loving and merciful and gracious, praise God, the blood of Jesus, that we get to surrender and we get to repent. Father, forgive me for leaning on my own understanding. Father, thank you for showing me myself so that I can repent, so that I could be suited and booted and prepared for the kingdom of heaven. For when Jesus comes back, I'm ready. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So this here, we're going to talk about mindset. Shanice, why don't you tell them what we're going to be talking about? What's what's this five day challenge about? Tell them. Uh, you guys. So we're going to cover mindset, vision, healing, purpose, transformation, you guys. But transformation is not outward, right? It's an inner job 
that show that that it's like a caterpillar, right? And I I was studying. I'm sorry, a butterfly. I was studying the butterfly one time and I felt like I was dying, y'all. Like this was at the beginning of the year. I'm like, why do I feel like I'm dying? Like it felt like I'm dying to everything or what I wanted to do, right? And I understand the scripture, you know, we have to die to our own flesh. But I'm like, God, why do I feel like I'm dying? You said transformation. But when I looked up what happens to a butterfly before they become a butterfly, they literally die. They die, they they eat their self. Ain't that and you probably thinking, like, how can they eat they self? They literally eat their self mm -hmm. before they become this beaut these beautiful colors that we see, and they soar and they fly at their at the highest altitude, but we don't see them when they're inside of this cocoon and when they are um uh, eat when they go through a stage, they have to eat, right? I call that to the reading a word. You eat, you, you eating and you're reading the word and you got to have you in isolation mm -hmm. and you're eating and you're just discovering who he is. And then you have to go through a season that you have to die to like, so say you have to die to your own understanding. You have to die to what you think, you know, you have to die to that old life so you can be made new in him Amen. or you can get to that transformation. You have to do, you have to recognize that you have the wrong mindset. You have to recognize that you have vision inside of you. You have to recognize that God have given you the power to heal and he have sent us and he sent people messages here on earth to give you the tools that we have used, that he have used and have given us to help you to overcome everything that you're facing right now. And we're going to dive in so you can know your purpose. Y'all, your purpose is not in your job. Your purpose is not in a relationship. Your purpose is inside of you. And I promise you, once you leave the five day, you're gonna be like, hold on, wait. You mean to tell me my purpose was in me my this whole entire time? Yes. You mean to tell me that I have the tools to heal and it's inside of me? Yes. You mean to tell me that God have already no, you God have already put vision. Yes, please go. Put vision inside of me. Yes. Everything you need is inside of you, you guys. And we're gonna deal with it for the five days. Mindset, we're gonna deal with the distortion of the mind. I'm going to show you how to shift your paradigm to align with God. I'm going to show you how to reprogram your mind because you programmed your mind uh, uh, in Romans 12, 2. It said to be ye transformed from the patterns of this world, right? So that means that your mindset is actually with the patterns of this world. You like, God, I know you have this new thing for me, but I, I find myself in patterns. I find myself in cycles. You're in a pattern and the cycles of this world. And God wants to come in. He wants to transform your mind. He wants to restore your mind. He wants to renew your mind according to him. And we're going to dive into that so you will be able to start having the mind, the process to have the mind of Christ. And this, the, the challenge, you guys, is just like we're going to scratch the surface. It's so much deeper. But trust me, you're going to have stuff that you can apply each and every day. Yes, yes. Why don't, why don't, since we're doing that, let's, let's transition into our, and thank you for walking through all that because you did the mindset, vision, healing process, which is purpose, right? You're walking through the process and going through it and then transformation, right? So this fifth day is actually a collaborative effort um, that Shanice and I will co-lead on Friday. And it's going to be a wrap up, but it's for you to see that the transformation didn't come from us. It didn't come from Shanice. It didn't come from me. It came from you first seeking the kingdom of God. Okay. So this level is going to be you doing the work. OK, and in just five days, having tangible evidence of Holy Spirit being in your life, you've mm -hmm. been asking. Right. You've been saying, God, you've been saying, I need a sign. I need a sign. This your sign. You need to just breathe. That's what that guy is like. You need to just breathe. Like and, and here's the encouragement. Like he's the Ruach of God, the breath of God. When I was going through this series and preparing for it. I kept hearing the breath of God, the Ruach of God, the breath of God in the lungs when, you know, people are sick and praying and doing all these different things. The breath of God, the breath of God, the Ruach of God. For that, for him to come through you yes. and dwell in you and breathe life into you. Mm. Mama. Mama. Greater is in you than he was in this world. He spoke you into existence. Sound 
air, everything, breath. There's a sound with it. And that sound is, is you hearing, do I need to do this? Do I need to go do that? Seek God, mm. ask him. Lord, do you need me to do this challenge? Lord, do you need me to continue walking in this way? Those things. And the reason why I say that is because we all want the transformation. We mm -hmm. all want and think that the grass is greener on the other side, right? But I'm not equipped for Shanice's grass. Mm, I'm not equipped for, I don't know what Shanice has gone through. I mean, I know, but I haven't walked. That's not my lane. That's not, and I, I say that and we, and I always do that with sisters. Like we go back and forth and we chat like this because we have to understand that the area that he gave you, the inheritance, the land, your portion with the mindset, okay, mm -hmm. of renewing your mind and that vision, as you renew your mind, the vision becomes clearer, why? Because you're repenting of things that are clouding up your vision. Mm. The healing starts happening. Shanice will talk about that. I, 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 I was healing. I, I mean, everything's happening. Things, are, things start happening in your life. You're crying. You're, you're experiencing. Hello. Things are happening. You, you feel sad, but you're not depressed. It's right. like you're grieving. You're experiencing these things. And then all of a sudden, he tells you to look back. And he gave you a process. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so come, come on. A process to heal, not only yourself, right? To lay, like, at least lay hands back in the day. Now we lay hands on ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. That's okay. We smack ourselves up. We have said, we, we can do this. You can do this. Yes. And that's the transformation process. So why is that important? What's the kickoff? Shanice, drop them their first action step right now. The very first thing I want you guys to do, and I just, I, I want to, it, it's a two part to forgiveness. And the very first part, you would think that the hardest part would be for God to forgive you. That's the easy part because repentance means that you're turning away from your old life, right? You're not just having like an emotional uh, experience and crying out, you know, that comes with it, but you're turning your back from your old life and God gives you a new, uh, a, a new beginning. He gives you a clean slate. The hard part is you forgiving yourself. You forgiving yourself from those relationships. You forgiving yourself for disobeying God. We, I don't know about you guys, but I dealt with condemnation and shame so bad. I dealt with it so bad, you guys. You know the promise that God gave me? Ugh, I'm telling y'all, God is so loving. He gave me Isaiah 61.7. That instead of shame, you'll receive a double portion. That instead of confusion, you shall dwell in your land of inheritance. And every lasting joy, every lasting joy shall be your portion. How beautiful is that? That the very thing that I dealt with my whole entire life, which was shame and confusion in the mind. Why do the enemy want you to operate in confusion? Because when you're operating in confusion, when you're op operating in indecisiveness, when you're operating double-mindedness, you can never come up with a solid decision and you will end up wavering back and forth. And what do, uh, in the Bible, it talks in, in the book of James, one and four, right? That uh, an unstable man can get nothing from the Lord, right? So, and you will be surprised that that unforgiveness have a lot to do with the indecisiveness because for me, I was operating in unforgiveness. Should I forgive this person? Should I not? Right, that that toil, that trauma that caused that double mindedness, that trauma that caused the mind to be to be separate, separated apart, that trauma, right, that God has to come in and heal and has to gut out. So I want you to start forgiving, not only forgiving, ask God for forgiveness, but forgive yourself and ask some God, help me forgive me, help me for to forgive me because I don't I, I don't forgive me. I, I'm so, like Sister just said, uh, what Paul, God, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. But then he sent the angel to transform him. Then he sent the angel to encourage him. So while you're sitting here and you're looking at yourself like mediocre, I remember Holy Spirit said this to me about a year ago. He said, stop looking at yourself mediocre. There's nothing mediocre about you. There's nothing mediocre about you. You looking at yourself like an ant and, I, and you are giant in the spirit. You a whole giant in the spirit. One day I was getting up and I was going to go to the bathroom. I heard a voice say to me, 
hell is afraid of you. Mm. Afraid of who? That's what I'm... I ain't got nothing. This was my mindset, child. I ain't got nothing. At this time, like, I'm I'm staying with my mom, with my kids. I had just left this relationship. You have taken everything from me. <laughs> I don't have anything. What is they afraid of me of, right? But as I started growing in my identity and growing in knowing who I was and started forgiving myself and started allowing God to forgive me, right? I started saying, I see why hell was afraid of me. Since you more powerful than what you know, yeah. you more powerful than uh, hell is afraid of what you what the day you're going to believe who God called you to be. You got monitoring spirits like, did she find out today? Did she figure it out yet? Did she figure out who she called you yet? Did she figure out her gifts and her talents? Did she figure out the dominion that she had in her hand? Did she figure this? Have she figured this out yet? Have she figured this out yet? And you know what disarm your power? Unforgiveness. Mm. It disarms it. And you don't even have your power to even operate in because you're walking in unforgiveness. And you're going to have to forgive those people too. Them people that hurt you. And I'm going to be honest with me to my next step. Surrender and submit. Because you will have to surrender some of that pain that you don't want to let go. Let's be honest. And this is the thing about it, this how dope God is. He know you're not ready to submit. He know you're not ready to surrender that part of forgiving that person over. And guess what? He's going to be right there waiting for you to lift it over. But he wants you to do it quick. Because mm. the quicker you do it, the quicker he wants to bless you. God wants to bless his children. Mm -hmm. I want to end with that. God wants to bless you. He wants to give you every promise. But when you're operating unforgiveness, his hands is tied up because he said, I'm telling you to forgive them. And I cannot release this to you because if I release this, be honest, that person that hurt you, you ready to show out. Mm. Ready. You ready to say, aha, aha. Look what God did for me. I'm going to be, uh, that was me. Mm. That was me. And God had to show that like, you want me to bless you. But you got that unforgiveness in your heart towards that person. So like this was saying, like I was I was that person that that's how I seek attention. I might have my baby at an early age, but I finished school. I might have a baby at an early age, but I went to college. And you know what I'm saying? But that was the way of me getting my attention. So I felt like if God blessed me more than he had blessed my people that have hurt me, then I could smile in their face. Y'all, that's that's pride. Amen. Amen. That's pride. So, so are you saying unforgiveness is pride? It's pride. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to operate in that. Y'all know what happened to Saul? Mm -hmm. This story. He ended up killing himself in the end. Oh, Jesus. Let mm -hmm. that unforgiveness go because it leads to pride, y'all. And I'm not talking from a place of just what I heard. It's what I have experienced. Amen. I had I was just driving one day and I, I I think I called sis. I said, sis, I got so much pride in me. I didn't even know, but thank God that he revealed it to me. Pray, sis, I'm with you. I um, praise God. Thank praise God he revealed God. I had so much pride in my heart. So uh, the very first step I want you to do, I want you to forgive. Forgive yourself. Ask God for forgiveness. And then I want you to forgive everybody. Write a list of everybody that you're holding and harboring pain over to. Yes. And then I will step two. I want you to surrender and release that person. Surrender Amen. and su surrender those emotions. Surrender that pain. Yes. Surrender it so you can be at rest. The one night, y'all, I was laying down and I heard Holy Spirit say to me, and then I'm done, you guys. I heard Holy Spirit say to me, pass your burdens onto me. Mm. And y'all, this is this is. I was like, oh, he must want me to make this as a post tomorrow. <laughs> he was talking about me. He said, "You walking around here with all this stuff? Give it to me, and I'm gonna give you rest." Mm -hmm. And me, I think I oh, I got it. He had to reveal to me you've been thinking you had it since sixteen. Clearly, you ain't got it. I'm oh oh, oh okay, okay. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> Let me let it go. You right. I thought I had it. You right. Huh? Here you go. 
right? But his sovereignty, he he showed me that, like, you holding on to this stuff, give it to me. And I'm like, after I released it and I gave it to him, I was at a sense of peace. Yes. I was sense of rest because I can't do all of this by myself. It's impossible. Eight kids, it's impossible. Breathe, sis. And only how you're going to be able to breathe, surrender to God, submit to him, and forgive. Amen. Amen. So with that, we're going to wrap up with this. If you're struggling with getting into that position of, of forgiveness, of forgiving, okay, if you're struggling with that and, you know, writing it down and facing it and all of those things, um, I want to encourage you to, with this closing action step, is to look at your priorities. And I put on here my way versus God's way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to shine some light on this. Okay. Cause a lot of times we don't want to hear this. Okay. But I'm going to speak from my story. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was a time in my life <clears throat> that my priorities were based out of survival mode. Okay? They, my priorities were based on, I got to pay the bills. I got to make this money. I got to do this. I knew how to hustle. Okay. But hustle got me bitter. Mm -hmm. Hustle got me broken. Hustle got me busted. I felt disgusted. Why? Because I was burnt out. I was on a struggle bus. My priorities were about the bank, not about the blood of Jesus. Okay? <laughs> like, 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 let's just be real. Okay? I, got, I got my book. Y'all got your book. <laughs> Y'all picking my notes. So the reason why I say that, okay, and praise God for his humor at the appointed time, right? Because this is hard stuff, right? But we over here chasing the paper, we chasing the bank, the dollar, and we're bitter, we're broken, we're busted, and we broke. We we still got, we got, ain't got no money to pop, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. There's a reason why they say that. They, they say they apostles. We should be reading about Peter and Paul. <laughs> okay. And I say that. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is me. This was like the smacking that I had to get. I remember one day, uh, I'm going to share this. God just brought this to me. But he says, you know, peace I give you, peace I leave you. I do not give as the world gives. And I saw this picture of a vehicle and I was like, this going to be mine. And oh, yes. And I showed my dad and I hung it up on the thing. And I was a new mom. I was obedient. I ditched my nine to five. I was so I was like, yes, we're going to do this mom lab. I'm going to do homeschool and I'm going to get my nice little because I Holy Ghost ride the whip. You know, you get in your car, you pull, turn on your music and you pray. And that's me. OK, the kids are screaming in the back. I don't care because I'm with Jesus right now, 10 and 2. Okay, like I'm driving 10 and 2. But really, what I'm saying is, and my dad was looking at me like, oh, I don't think that's what that meant. <laughs> so here's what I'm saying The peace I, God says, the peace I give you, the peace I leave you, mm -hmm. I do not give as the world gives. I want you to get your priorities in order. Mm, stop it. You can't heal because your priorities are not in order. Mm. God is decent and in order. Now, mm. let me be honest with you. I got dishes on the sink. Mm. I need to sweep and mop these floors. Okay. We've had a lot. Life happens. Okay. The, these aren't excuses. Life happens. But if your priority is what am I going to post? What is she saying? What is she doing? I'm, oh, I don't know what she's doing. How is she doing this? And we got all of this stuff mm -hmm. in our eye gates and our ear gates, the music that we're listening to. Why are we listening to about hoes and all this kind of, I ain't a hoe. The, the word of God, nowhere in the word of God does it call, say the promises of God. Somebody needs to go look that up. The promises of God are yes and amen. Okay. Go look up the promises of God. You can Google it, okay? It'll give you a list of scriptures. Pull out your Bible, dust it off, and highlight those promises, okay? Highlight the promises. 
and, and, and look at them and say, God, this is what you have for me. This is what you created me for. You mm -hmm. created me to be a lender and not a borrower. I'm going to check what is that, Lord? I don't, I can't even balance a checkbook. Uh, I barely passed math. I was a C student and I got a degree. How did, how did this happen, God? How is it that every time the bills come, you, there's money comes or somebody drops a hundred dollars and they say, oh no, you can have it. Or somebody blesses or they give gas or somebody pays for the food at, at, in the, in the drive through for you. Oh, oh. God is showing so many signs, miracles, and wonders that he is present, but you can't see him because your priorities are of the world and not of God. Mm. You're asking God to heal you. You're asking God to bless you, but he can't bless you because you haven't made him a priority. Mm. And I get emotional because that's just how I'm feeling right now, but I want to say this. Write a list of your priorities. Write a list of them. And if he's not on that list, that's why you're bitter. That's why you're broken. That's why you feel busted. That's why you feel disgusted in yourself every time you try to go get something thinking it's going to give you peace. But really what it does is it makes you feel horrible. And then you're, that's the reason why. The peace he gives you, the peace he leaves you, he does not give as the world gives. You could be walking in the midst of a storm, people looking at you. Why has that girl got a smile on her face? Why is she giggling? The how you know, things are, <laughs> are a mess. And she just told me that God loves me. Mm. She just blessed me. Why? Because the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. You want peace? You want you want a heart for God? You you want to get rid of depression? Soaking. God didn't make victims, he made soldiers. Mm. So the things we're gonna face are gonna be hard. What Shanice just asked you to do, forgiveness, it's gonna be hard. It's hard. This morning I was crying, woo, you know, like, cause I'm trying, look, I'm, I'm trying to go before God, like, you know, oh, you know, you, you speaking to me, right? <laughs> confirming so many things, like, like, seriously, like you're confirming so much. That's why I'm at right now. Like I had just told you guys every now and then God had to take me, take that ride, you know, the edge of that ride of the shepherd, get back here. You 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 went right here. I need you to rest, and that's why I'm at right now. Rest. So you're confirming what he's saying to me right now. I I want to give you peace. Yes. Yes. Not yes. bang bang. I was finna cry. So I had to switch it up. Yes. But I want to be your peace. Yes. That even in a storm and what are whatever is going on that you can just be laying down like oh okay that tree look jesus just hit the sky oh, okay it's okay i'm gonna go to the joy of the lord and <laughs> you just start singing people looking at you like what you think i don't know but i had a tune today <laughs> do you hear me <laughs> <laughs> I'm running on E, but God got me to eternity. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> so I pray. I pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So forgiveness. Okay. And get your priorities in order. Write them down on a piece of paper, okay? And ask God, does, does this one, is this me or is this you? Mm. And if you don't hear from him, rest in him. Mm. Step back for a little bit. Go clean the house. Listen to some worship music. Do life different. And wait till he tells you. He will tell you. He will confirm it. 
you'll be driving, let's say you're, um, um, let's say you're driving down the, the, okay, like this just came to me. This is how he'll confirm sometimes, right? And we'll end on this. He literally, you, you say, okay, my car, my vehicle, things, all of this stuff, right? Because that's one of the things, like, I need to clean up my car, okay? And it's this is a silly thing, but I, I just led to share it. So you ever be somewhere and you're like, but I don't know if God's talking to me. I don't know if that's God. Because let me tell you, God told me to ditch my nine to five and I try to rebuke it. I was like, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I ain't leaving my career. Like, I thought it was like, that's the devil. I ain't leaving that. All this. All this school, everything that I done been, oh my Lord Jesus, oh no, I, mm -mm, that ain't God, no, 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 and it was, because that was an idol, that mm. my career and all of those things, because I made a priority with, it was my security, mm. because I knew that, because I had trust issues with men and women, mm. okay? So if I had a career, I could always get a job. I could always make money. I could, I'm, you know, I'm educated enough as a woman. If I have a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling, I can serve people. I can help them. I can do all of this, but I can still make money. I can work for a company, but I could work for myself as well. Do you see what I'm saying? It was, it was, I had that, it was a survival thing. Mm. So now let's go back to, okay, the car. My priority, your list of task list to do is to clean out the car, right? That's one of mine, okay? I'm just being real. Or is this the priority or is this me on my own understanding, right? And then all of a sudden you're driving down the street and somebody's bumping the music and it's at the car wash. Whoa. <laughs> so then my son starts singing. <laughs> That is good. <laughs> so the reason why I share that is he will confirm, he will speak to you how he knows to speak to you. And how do you know? The peace he leaves you, mm -hmm. the peace he gives you, he does not give as the world gives. Mm -hmm. So if you feel shame, if you feel disgusted, if you feel Stop. fear, now there's fear of God, right? But there's a piece of that. Like you have peace when, when God like clinches you, when he says, get it right, you know, and you just like, okay, Lord. And it's like 10 hut, like you like, okay, Jesus, that's the fear of the Lord. He's correcting you. Like when sis was saying like, you know, his rod and his staff, they comfort, it's a rod. It points for direction, correction, but it also has a hook at the end. If you look at a staff, because he, you pull the sheep in, mm -hmm. you know his voice. So if you have stuff on your list that are giving you anxiety and make you feel depressed, Shanice already walked you through how to release those to him. Ooh, just, this bless me. Just, I know me too. <laughs> I would be loving you later. And I like, this, this is God. Okay. Any two time I, I ever question and say, God, am I in the right place? He will give me a dream mm -hmm. and I will forget about the dream until that point in time. And when uh, Sis was talking, I remember the dream of this, of him giving me, if it's, and, but I forgot it. I had forgot that I had this dream. Wow. Praise God. So it's nothing, but God let me know, I got you. Mm. I got you. Praise God. Let's close. If you are interested to sign up. It's easy sign up. Okay. Let me walk you through this. You go to the page. Okay. That link, you can read all about it. You can see all this stuff. We tell you a little bit about the five days for day one mindset. I'm going to be sharing with you some tools from my self-published workbook. It's called the prep book. It talks about the fruit of the spirit, one fruit a month about goal setting. Shanice is going to be diving deep on day three. Um, she's taking a piece from her course, okay? But it's a, a, a signature part. And I put on here 
It's the fiery truth, okay, to why you're stuck in your healing process. You run from your healing process and feel overwhelmed when you actually decide to move forward, okay? So she's going to tap into some things to help you understand and see it, right? Because when we make it tangible, then guess what? We can learn a process. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I help you not learn my process, not learn Shanice's process. Those are just tools and things to help you as we build, right? We're, we're builders, we're workers in the vineyard, right? But if it's something that helps you unlock your process, unlock everything for yourself, glory be to God, right? Mm -hmm. If what Shanice and I have gone through are stepping stones to help you building stones, right? God's building his church for you to write your story and heal, right? Because mm -hmm it's just, there's a lot, but it's the three-step signature process in, in Well Valley and what we do at Well Valley for family and business. Okay. So that you can start getting it together. Okay. You're able to really write the vision and make it plain and walk it out in the name of Jesus. It's not, I think it's this. It's not, oh, it may be this. Oh, I'm going to do this. No, he told you this. He told you to wash the car. You heard at the car wash, okay? Rolls Royce was bumping in the neighbors, you know, <laughs> okay? Like, it, he, you know it. He had you write it down, right? He had you make it plain, get the action steps, maybe meet a business coach, a business plan. I'm going to be teaching that, okay? So we're taking key core stuff to help you, okay? To help you get there, right? Oh, okay. Here's the thing. On day five, you take everything and you'll leave with a transformation roadmap and it's a wrap up, okay? It's a wrap up. So you have the option of purchasing a workbook for $5. You'll see all of that when you sign up or when you actually get into the group. And basically, you're going to learn that this collaborative effort is here to show you that there is no one size fits all, okay? What works for me didn't work. For Shanice, what worked for Shanice may work for me. It's we don't we don't know, right? Iron sharpens iron. But when we're doing that, if we're leading by the power of the Holy Spirit and we're walking mm -hmm. in love and we're walking in joy, we're walking in peace in the presence of the Holy Spirit, where two or more are gathered, He is present. Praise God, right? Yeah. You get to discover your own actual transformational roadmap mm -hmm. that I didn't give you. Shanice didn't give it to you. God already spoke that. The breath of God spoke that into you when he created you before the earth. Mm -hmm. It's in you, but it's covered up with unforgiveness. It's covered up with shame. It's yeah. covered up with all of these things, the, the, the idols and the fits of rage and the lust and all of that. So by walking through this, we're going to show you yeah. how God set us free in so many things. And if we can bless you, so you get your own roadmap to walk in the clarity, the consistency, and the confidence in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 90 days. All you have to do is click. You can read about it where it says register now. You click this link here and it's going to take you to the new Facebook group that we have. All you have to do is join this group. Okay. It's a private group. We're doing it in a different way. All you have to do is click there. Um, Shanice or myself will reach out to you. So if you decided to do it, all you have to do is wait for us to get back with you. We'll be in the DMs. We'll chat with you. We'll ask for your email address so we can send you some personal stuff. All right. Some great, um, you know, teachings, trainings, all of that kind of stuff. And that's it. That's it. Okay. You'll get notifications to your phone. We'll walk you through the things. We're literally here to go on an adventure with you. Okay. And we're letting you lead. Meaning when you listen, okay. When you hear what we're saying and you say, you know what, Angelica, or you know what, Shanice, I was really struggling with that forgiveness thing. I, I don't I don't know how to do that. Like every time I try to do that, something comes up. Message, mm -hmm. reach out. Let's start the conversation, okay? That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Do you have anything for them, Shanice? No, I don't, but just y'all get on here. <laughs> it's gonna bless your whole soul. Do not leave. Another year. I know we make goals, and by March, April, the goal is done. We have defaulted back to our old life due to once again the mindset we you have a default setting. If you are not renewing your mind in the right way and get to those them neurology pathways, I know I said it wrong, y'all. <laughs> those pathways, and you are allowing God to renew yourself in His Word. You do not want to miss this challenge. You do not want to miss it. It's free. Yes, and it's free. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> you guys, it is free. Free. Uh, freely, freely, freely as we received, freely as we give. Right. We didn't pay for this transformation. The stuff that we paid for didn't work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the workbook, it, you're paying $5 because it's a roadmap. It's a tangible thing for you to write on. It helps us deliver it to you. You know, and that that's what it is. We pray this blesses you. God bless you. Okay. Yeah. See you in the challenge. If you register. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.